All right, we are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us on this somber Monday morning as uh, we are honoring fallen police officer John Anderson. Metro police officer John Anderson died in a uh, fiery wreck on the 4th of July, the morning of the 4th of July. And um, there is a memorial this afternoon at 1 o'clock that will be covered live here on the News Channel 5 network right here on the Plus, also streaming live at NewsChannel5.com and on Facebook, as well as on our main channel at 1 o'clock. Visitation is starting this morning there at Cornerstone Church in Madison at at uh, 11 or at 9 o'clock. It'll go from 9 to 11.30. And uh, that, again, is over there at Cornerstone Church um, on Old Hickory Boulevard. And we've got some phone calls and more messages as people following. And we'll go next on the, uh, the line to Amber. Amber, good morning. Hi, Amber. Hello. How are you today? Well, it's, it's a somber morning, isn't it? It is, and I really hate this situation because um, I first want to say my prayers go out to his family, but also to the family of the teenager because I once was a teenager and I've done some of the same things, you know, that she's done, sneaking out, stealing the car, you know. Um, I believe the saddest part is that when she left out the house that night to have fun, of course, I don't feel like she left out of the house to kill someone, but sometimes when you do things that you don't have any business, they, even worse things happen and it's consequences that, that go with that. Um, do I feel like she can be rehabilitated? Yes, I do. She's 17 years old. Um, I don't feel like she should get life in prison um, or the death penalty for um, for this action. Um, even though it's one of the worst actions that could have happened, um, vehicular homicide is very serious. But um, I want to say prayers for both the families because both the families are at loss. Of course, the police officer's family, his his son, his wife, you know, um, even his close family that are police officers also. But this girl, she is also uh, at loss and her family is too because when they went to sleep at night, they didn't know their car would be stolen either, you know. But we as teenagers sometimes, they, they go out of the way and they do too much. Now, one of the things I do feel like that should be done in the state of Nashville, a lot of funding has been cut for the last 10 to 15 years for all the different programs that do help these teens out. And some of that is a result of what can happen when government funding for for programs for teenagers has been cut. They don't have anything to do, so they have nothing to do but get into trouble. Mm -hmm. But um, like I said, I once was a teenager, and, I, and I've done these same things, and um, I'm just thankful that I didn't get into anything of that nature. Listen, I, I do appreciate your call, and I think that's a good perspective. I think on a morning like this, the anger and, and you know, the, the tears that come with the, a fallen officer. People are so angry and, you know, there are some who probably think, well, she should be charged with murder and locked up and, and sent to prison. for That's not happening. And with good reason, that's not happening, okay? She did not intend to kill this officer. What she did was awful, okay? There's no doubt about it. But I, I, I hear what she's saying. I think we all did some foolish things in our youth, all right? And, you know, be it going joyriding, not paying attention, running a stop sign, whatever, and maybe you were lucky enough not to hit someone, okay? That's not to excuse anything what this, this teen has done. But she's accused of vehicular homicide among some other charges, but the most serious is that. That can be eight to 30 years in prison, okay? That's the range in Tennessee. Anywhere from eight to 30 years in prison, is she going to do 30 years? Absolutely not. It's not going to happen, okay? We don't even know if she's going to be transferred. I think one thing that will play into what type of sentence she does get, especially if she's transferred to adult court, will be whether or not they found that she was under the influence when she was behind the wheel. Now, we don't know. There was no indication of that, and police have not said. Now, she was taken to the hospital after this wreck, and because someone lost their life in the wreck, all right, they're able to draw blood from her, okay? So there's going to be a toxicology on her. Now, if it comes back that she's drunk or is on some kind of drug, that's going to make things worse for her, all right? But uh, as everyone gets so angry, and I see this, and I'm angry, and it makes me mad, and I hate the tragedy of all of this, okay? Let's just make sure we put this into context. This is not a serial killer. This is not someone who plotted to kill a police officer. That's the worst of the worst. This is a teen that made a horrible, horrible mistake, that did something she shouldn't have done, and that she should have known was dangerous, that accidentally killed someone. And she will be punished in that way. Just so you understand, that's where the law is. You may feel otherwise, but under the law, that's the way it is, and frankly, that's the way it should be. This is not some mass murderer. This is not someone who planned this and, and decided to kill a police officer, all right? 
for what she did, she will be punished for. And she could face a lot of time behind bars if she is transferred. All right, let's go next to uh, Susie. Susie, good morning. Hi, Susie. Good morning. Good morning, Susie. What's on your mind? First, I'd like to give my condolences to the family and the police officers. My question is, I don't know if Nick can answer this, but it might be addressed to Glenn Funk. Are they just trying the juvenile, trying to try the juvenile as an adult because it was an officer involved, Rick, or is it just for the state of Tennessee? That's my question for today. Okay, I'm not sure I understand exactly. I think what Glenn Funk is probably going to say that he would seek this possibly regardless of whether or not it was an officer that killed was killed. Now I think we can all agree because it was a law enforcement officer killed in the line of duty in some ways that enhances the severity of this. Now the loss of life if that was you or me would be just as great and just as horrible but because of an officer that's a question for, for General Funk and I don't know that he would answer it um, is would you have sought transferring this 17 year old if she had hit and killed someone else that wasn't a police officer, do you think? Um, and he may say, based on what I see her juvenile record, based on the severity of her crime that she should have known better, he might well say, and I think he probably would, that yes, I would have sought it anyway. So that's where I think that comes down. Um, yeah, but I, I don't know, I can't answer for him, but um, yeah, they, they oftentimes seek to transfer children for and teens, very serious crimes. And I think this qualifies as a serious crime. That's where the judge, the juvenile court judge, will make the call. Let's see, let's go quickly to Danny. Hello, Danny. Hi, Danny. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Danny. First of all, I would like to thank News Channel 5 for covering this such sad occasion that we're going through now. And I, I would also like to pay my respects to Officer Anderson and his family and his coworkers. I was on the police department back in the late 70s. So yes, this is my brother. And I would like for people to understand, I hear a lot of talk uh, this morning about the suspect and, and things like that, but I want people to understand, being a police officer, man or a woman, it's not a choice of, well, I need a job, I'm gonna go sign up for the police department. You're, you're born to be a police officer. It's a passion that you have. And that was the way with Officer Anderson. He had a passion to make a difference in Davidson County. Mm -hmm. And we all, we all need to remember that. I think you're absolutely right. And, and I think um, we had a window into that in some of his writings and what he said after he was sworn in as an officer four years ago and just how it, important it was to him. So I agree with you. And uh, that's a fine call. Listen, let's take a break. We'll be back and wrap things up right after this.